Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The ceremony will begin shortly. To preserve the dignity of this ceremony, please silence all cellular phones and electronic devices for the duration. Ladies and gentlemen, Facebook family and friends, good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the National Naval Aviation Museum and to the change of command during which Rear Admiral Kyle Kozad will be relieved by Rear Admiral Pete Garvin. I am Captain Clifford Collins, Chief of Staff, Naval Education and Training Command. I will be your Master of Ceremonies. Joining us to recognize and bear witness to this change of command and retirement ceremony is the better half to Rear Admiral Kozad, his lovely wife, Mrs. Amy Kozad, their daughters, Miss Leanne Kozad and her son Jackson, and Leanne's close friend, Miss Ashley McCall, their other daughter, Miss Ashley Kozad, and her fiance, Matt Kirk, their son, Lieutenant Dan Kozad and their dear, dear friends, Mr. and Mrs. Jimmy Adams. Also joining us, we have Mrs. Cheryl Garvin, the lovely better half to Admiral Garvin. This is our mega audience in the COVID environment. I want to thank both families for their support to these extraordinary officers and gentlemen in our United States Navy. The support you have provided to these fine officers over the years have allowed them to give every measure of themselves to our Navy. Collectively, they have each made significant contributions to advance our Navy and this great nation while standing the watch. This ceremony, this change of command, will commensurate the turnover of the watch and we will bid farewell to a shipmate, relieve him from the watch. The change of command ceremony is a time-honored tradition, formally restating the continuity and authority of command. It is a formal ritual conducted before the assembled company of the command, as well as honored guests and dignitaries. The change of command is unique in the world today. It is a transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one individual to another. In a COVID-restricted environment, we embrace this honored tradition 
by extending this event to friends and families to watch live via Facebook. Today's event will also include a retirement ceremony which recognizes Admiral Kozad's extraordinary career and completion of more than 35 years of commissioned service. For the few guests with us and our guests and friends joining us on Facebook, we will start this event by playing a recording of the national anthem and a recorded invocation by Chaplain Miller. Military guests, please rise. Please remain standing until after the national anthem and invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. A recorded invocation by Chaplain Miller will now be played. I'm Chaplain Baron Miller, and this will be the first prayer for the ceremony. This is the invocation. Let us pray. Gracious God, today the mantle of responsibility from Rear Admiral Kozad is passed to Rear Admiral Garvin and we call upon you to bless him from this day forward as our new commanding officer of Naval Education Training Command. As the scripture says, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. This, now, starting today, is Admiral Garvin's time. So we would ask that you give him extra measures of the leadership characteristics needed to bring glory to you and honor to our nation. We welcome his family, especially his wife Cheryl, into our own and ask you to bless her as she too bears the burden of command responsibilities with her husband. Help us all to realize the great responsibilities that are placed upon Admiral Garvin by those in higher authority. May we dedicate to our new CO, our loyalty, our industry, and our best service. May we take a fresh hold upon our duties that we may bring credit to our new commanding officer as he leads us from the front with honor, courage, and commitment. And now we commit this ceremony and this season of change to follow into your care. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Chaplain Miller, thank you for the invocation and taking the time to be part of this ceremony. Military, uncover two. Will the guests please be seated? Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest speaker is Vice Admiral John Now. He is our Chief of Naval Personnel and Rear Admiral Kozad's direct boss. His remarks have been pre-recorded and they will appear on the mega screen. Good afternoon. What an incredible honor and privilege it is to be with all of you today albeit virtually. I truly wish I could be there in person to mark such a momentous change of command that celebrates the career of a great American, Rear Admiral Kyle Kozad. But I am thankful to be able to be just a small part of this special day 
from afar. I've known KC for many, many years. I'm privileged to be able to call him a friend and a mentor. And over the last couple of years, I've been even luckier to have been able to call him a shipmate on the My Navy HR team. So when KC said that he wanted me, a surface warfare officer, to put on a flight suit to start his change of command, I said, I will be there as John Nowell, your old friend. And so, KC, as you can see, I'm here in my flight suit, and I do have to tell you, it is much more comfortable than any other uniform in our sea bag. Thanks. Now, John Nowell, Kyle's old friend, was pretty happy to be wearing a flight suit. Uh, John Nowell, Chief of Naval Personnel, is also in charge of uniforms for the Navy. So I had to go ahead and get in the right uniform for this change command ceremony. And let me just say that as I look at what the team there has done, and as I look at how much I rely on the entire My Navy HR team to ensure that we can man the fleet with the right sailor at the right time, with the right training to ensure warfighting readiness, the work that Kyle and his team have done the change that he has led has been fundamental to achieving this mission. Under the leadership of KC, we've reimagined and reshaped the role of NETSI into what we now call the force development pillar of the My Navy HR team. We realigned our recruiting command and our recruit training commands to fall under the FD pillar. I like to describe the responsibilities of this job is street to fleet because the FD team is responsible for finding the best and brightest in the country. And oh, by the way, we were bringing in about 30,000 of those future sailors when Kyle took the command. 39,000 last year and about 41,000 this year. We bring them into the family through one of our many accession sources for both officers and enlisted and then provide them with the initial training they need to reach the fleet and hit the ground running. And that's about 14,000 accession pipeline course convenings each year. And if this were not enough, there are 248 learning centers across the continental United States, Hawaii, Guam, Japan, and Spain that they are also in charge of conducting more than 44,000 fleet-centered mission essential training sessions. The work that Kyle and his team have done keeping all of this running throughout the current COVID crisis is simply incredible. Now I will tell you that the transformation across what we used to call manpower personnel training and education, now my Navy HR, started by Admiral Moran, who you're gonna hear speak shortly was an incredibly challenging process. And KC has done such a phenomenal job from the conceptualization phase to operationalizing the vision. I could go on and on here, and many of you know that I do sometimes go on and on. But for anyone who has spent more than five minutes with KC, you know that he is the last person to accept praise and instead absolutely all of the time will redirect that attention to the accomplishments of his team. True to form, when I was talking with him about what he is most proud of and what he will miss the most about this tour, all he could talk about was the impressive work that his team had done as part of our larger My Navy HR team. He praised the tireless work they did to develop the FD supply chain into a highly effective linked network of collaboration and teamwork. He was so proud of how they delivered the Navy's very first ready, relevant learning, modernized content supporting the Operations Specialist Day School, the first time that we've done that for the Navy. He loved seeing the transformation in action from his Navy recruiting command team as they changed to a new organizational construct called the Navy Talent Acquisition Group model. And it has paid off huge, especially amidst the COVID crisis. And he was incredibly impressed with the modernized training at RTC, which has enabled better, 
faster and more effective training. More well-trained sailors getting to the fleet. All of these efforts to ensure we get the right sailor with that right training to the right billet each and every time. Casey went on to explain to me that some of his favorite moments at the command were when he was able to recognize the superior performance of some of his superstars, like Megan Wilson from ATRC, who won the 2020 Captain Joy Bright Hancock Award, and AOC Kimber Dominguez for earning the U.S. Navy Shore Sailor of the Year. And finally, Casey has a tendency to go on and on about his fantastic front office team who have been through so much with him and truly have become part of his family. And it's a good family. Well, KC, today we want you to know that the reason your team has been able to accomplish all that they have is undeniably because of your leadership. You, my friend, were the true barrier buster, enabling your team to do the hard work. You listen to their ideas, you gave them a chance to flourish, and all of that became a reality because of your leadership. And you saw their potential, and you fostered that into greatness. And so today, we simply want to say thank you, and we want you to know how incredibly proud of you that we are. Now, while I will immensely miss having you as part of our team, I am glad that I will always be able to call you a friend for years to come. Having had the honor and pleasure of getting to know the entire COZAD family, truly a Navy family, during our tour many years ago together in Millington, I do want to say thank you to each of them today. Casey's daughters, Ashley and Leanne, and his son, Dan, grandson, Jackson, and future son-in-law, Matt. Matt, you're coming into a good family. You got a bucket up there. I'm certain that you will measure up. I have immensely enjoyed our years working together, both here as well as in Millington. And I often joke that I would take any excuse to escape Washington, D.C. for Florida. But of course, it was really yours and Amy's hospitality, Kyle, that made each visit so incredibly special. So while this is something of a bittersweet moment, I am so pleased to be bringing in another old shipmate of mine, Rear Admiral Pete Garvin. Big shoes to fill, but Pete has big feet. And he also has an amazing family. His wife Cheryl, his two daughters, Kaylin and Lauren, his wonderful mother Becky, who I know is watching from Florida now, uh, and I know how proud, Becky, you are of the fine person uh, the fine officer, the fine leader that your son has been and continues to be, uh, and we're going to watch him flourish in this new role. Congratulations, Mom, on doing a simply spectacular job. And also, uh, Pete's sister Becky and brother Chris. We're so happy to have all of you with us uh, virtually. So even though Cheryl is the only one who can be there in person, I am so glad that the rest of the family is joining us virtually. Thank you for everything that you have all done in supporting Pete. As I mentioned, I have had the pleasure of working with Pete before in several different capacities over the years. And I have to tell you, there's no one more suited to lead the force development team to that next pinnacle than Pete Garvin right there in Pensacola. I'm excited to see what the future brings with Pete at the helm. Pete, welcome aboard. Now, Amy, while today is technically about Casey's change of command and retirement, and Admiral Moran is going to talk more about uh, the whole of Casey's career uh, and the retirement piece, but I want you to know how much we all appreciate what you have done. We all know that none of this would have been possible without you. You have been such an integral member of the NETSI team, the My Navy HR family, and most certainly the Pensacola community. Through every crisis, both on the home front, on the base, and indeed the nation, you have been part of the bedrock of support 
for KC, the thousands of sailors on the FD team, and certainly all of our Navy families. So with that said, I'm going to ask you to come up to the stage so that we can more formally recognize all of the work that you have done. And I just have to say, I so wish I was there in person to present the awards you are getting ready to receive. On behalf of a grateful nation and a grateful Navy, Joe Brooke and I are both sending you a huge virtual hug right now. Amy, congratulations, thank you, and God bless you and the entire COZAD family as you head off into a well-earned retirement. We know there's only good things on the horizon, but for now, we're going to salute you for what you have done. Thank you, Vice Admiral Now, for participating virtually. We appreciate your kind words and steady leadership. We are indeed a family. Mrs. Kozai, as Vice Admiral Now stated, we will recognize you. But let me go back in time just a little bit and walk us forward. About three years ago, you and Admiral Kozai arrived in Pensacola, excited and eager for this new assignment and a chance for you and Admiral Kozad to embrace the cradle of aviation. Or as your husband described it, holy geez, I feel like I hit the lottery. But it was during this assignment that you and your family were tested with many unfortunate events. And although there's no way I can measure the other events to the accident suffered by Rear Admiral Kozad early during this assignment, this accident hit the core of the Kozad household. Yes, it was personal. This event was devastating to the Navy team, but for the Kozad family, I can't begin to imagine what you felt or how you felt. But I know, we know, that you ensured your husband lived up to his words, the words he echoed when he took command in 2017 and said in front of the audience, and I quote, I don't like losing, period. In the darkest hours of your family journey, you, Mrs. Kozad, made sure this assignment was for the ages, the assignment to finish and finish strong. In the early days after Rear Admiral Kozad's injury, I know he was tested, tired, and he wanted to quit, wanted to take recovery slow. But you knew early on that he had to embrace recovery and build the strength and find a new normal. Your display was the example, the example for all spouses and a clear message of your commitment to your vows, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. And there too, you pledge thee your faith to him. Your example, your leadership, helped him get to where he's at today. Amy, this is the part I love. It plays well to, behind every great man is a great woman. This moment is a point of reflection for all who serve when we can pay tribute to our significant other for them supporting our Navy and families. As Vice Admiral now noted, the Navy will recognize you. We will present you with the Department of the Navy Meritorious Public Service Award. But before we get to the award, let me tell the audience, our Facebook friends and family about this award. The Department of the Navy Meritorious Public Service Award is the third highest recognition to pay to a civilian not employed by the Navy Department. This award is given for significant contributions with substantial impact upon a specific geographical location. For us, this is the force development domain. Amy, while leading your family, you adjusted your compass, a new norm and you were able to maintain a relationship with the local community. Because of your extraordinary impact, the Navy will recognize you 
for your service. The Chief of Naval Personnel takes pleasure in presenting the Meritorious Public Service Award to Mrs. Amy Kozad for services as set forth in the following citation. For distinguished public service in support of the United States Navy, the Department of Defense, and the nation from July 2017 to July 2020, providing unwavering and inspired aid to the mission of the My Navy HR Force Development Team across a wide range of activities. Mrs. Kozad's tireless devotion and commitment to sailors and their families significantly improved the quality of life of thousands serving in the force development domain. In the aftermath of the terrorist attack in Pensacola on December 6, 2019, Mrs. Kozad arranged for Emergency Family Assistance Center to have food and water for the staff and families impacted by the attack. Her unwavering assistance enabled the Fleet and Family Support Center to become a safe and welcoming space for those who needed counseling or a place to congregate. Her passionate concern for the Department of the Navy's families is indicative of a lifetime of dedicated service. Mrs. Kozad's active leadership and diplomatic skills on behalf of the Navy sailors and families in the force development domain reflected the highest form of public service to the Department of the Navy. Signed, John B. Now, Vice Admiral, United States Navy. For our Facebook family and friends, this was a point where we gave Mrs. Kozad a standing ovation. Rear Admiral Kozad, would you stand front and center for award presentation? The Navy would like to award you with the Distinguished Service Medal. Attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Distinguished Service Medal to Rear Admiral Carl Kozad, United States Navy, for services set forth in the following citation. For exceptionally meritorious service to the United States in duties of great responsibility while serving as Commander, Naval Education and Training Command from July 2017 to July 2020. Rear Admiral Kozad demonstrated extraordinary strategic vision leading the force development team to modernize the Navy's street to fleet process as he helped reshape the Navy's 243 year history in how we train the next generation warfighters while recruiting and retaining the best sailors in the highly competitive 21st century talent market. He also managed the enlisted incentives program worth more than 75 million annually to provide the fleet with the right sailors for the right jobs at the right time. Facing the gravity of coronavirus, Rear Admiral Kozad led his team in thinking out of the box, resulting in the Navy personnel supply chain remaining operational during this pandemic and supplying required manning for the fleet worldwide while minimizing risk to force. Rear Admiral Kozad's superior performance of duty highlight the culmination of 35 years of honorable and dedicated service. By his superior leadership, wise judgment, and deep devotion to duty, Rear Admiral Kozad reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, Secretary of the Navy. Will the guests please be seated? This time honored tradition, transfer of command will start with Rear Admiral Kozad reading of orders, followed by Admiral Garvin reading of orders. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander, Naval Education and Training Command, Rear Admiral Kyle Kozad. Thanks, Cliff. Uh, and uh, Facebook family and friends, thanks for being here. Um, so I just need to share with you uh, what Amy whispered in my ear as she was pinning my medal on. She said, I think my award has a higher precedence than yours does. 
that's probably also unprecedented. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to describe how important today is for uh, both Pete and I, uh, Cheryl and Amy, uh, as we turn over things. And uh, CMP, Admiral Now, I'm humbled by your remarks. Uh, if I do say so, you look pretty snappy in a flight suit, boss. Maybe you missed your true calling. Uh, I couldn't help but think that I looked at you in your flight suit that there are two types of people, those who are naval aviators and those who want to be naval aviators. Enough said. Now, this isn't how any of us expected this day to be, but despite falling back on a virtual ceremony, the 10 of us fortunate to be here today in person in the National Naval Aviation Museum, there is not a more special or sacred location to conduct this event. 35 years ago, Amy and I began our Navy journey and our journey in naval aviation right here in Pensacola, Florida. So it's more than fitting, actually pretty darn cool, that as I relinquish command today, even close the curtain on my Navy career in the cradle of naval aviation, I figured, how can you go out the door after 35 years, one month, 17 days, and one hour in the cathedral we know as Naval Aviation Museum in anything other than a flight suit? So here we are. But today is not necessarily about the flight suit. Today is about transfer of authority and responsibility for the Navy's largest shore command. And I can assure you that in almost three decades of knowing Pete and watching him absorb all the turnover information that comes with NETSI in the last two weeks, while he's rommed and I've self-quarantined, my good friend Pete Garvin is the right guy for the job. I have no doubts that he will take NETSI and our entire force domain, force development team to new heights as he takes the reins and leads this amazing command during an incredible dynamic and important time for our Navy. Welcome aboard to NETSI, Pete and Cheryl, and most importantly, welcome home to the cradle of naval aviation. Up front, I do want to pass along my personal thanks to the many folks who helped make today's virtual ceremony come to life. As you all in virtual land noticed, there's no flag detail, no side boys, no escorts or ushers, but there are a handful of folks who worked extremely hard to pull this off in a very non-traditional manner. My Chief of Staff, Captain Cliff Collins, my Protocol Officer, retired Master Chief Todd Schulz, and my Public Affairs Team, led by Commander James Stockman. Team, thanks for making this happen. Now, as I think back over the last three years at NETSI, I don't think anybody could have forecast the curveballs that were thrown our way. But despite those, nothing has stopped this incredible NETSI and force development organization from producing under the most challenging circumstances. Everything we have accomplished as a team owes credit to an amazing group of NETSI professionals here in Pensacola and sites around the country supporting force development. In the last three years, I'm proud of several things. Top of the list, we've delivered the first Ready Relevant Learning Modernized course to Great Lakes. They have created an effective enlisted supply chain, battle-tested and proven under the strain of COVID. They have implemented a world-class leadership development continuum for our Navy. They have improved recruiting effectiveness in the most challenging economic backdrop that we've seen in over a century. And they have modernized the way we train our Navy's newest sailors and officers with a focus on toughness and hands-on warfighting skills from day one. There are literally thousands of individuals who have been part of this success, but as we all have learned together, our success is not about individual credit, but more so acknowledgement of team accomplishments. Thanks to each one of you, members of the force development team, my flag leaders at NSTIC and Recruiting Command, Jamie and Dennis, my major commanders, their support staff and instructors around the world, and the NETSI headquarters staff for doing historic work. I'm prouder than words can describe with the many accomplishments that you all have delivered and even more proud to have been part of your team. For Rear Admiral Garvin, Pete, I had a four-star once tell me there's no such thing as a good two-star job. Well, as I'm on my way out, I can tell you that four-stars don't always know everything. You are about to inherit the best, most impactful, and most meaningful job in our Navy. You will have a chance to touch every sailor in our service, led by an amazing team of recruiters, instructors, recruit division commanders, and staff leaders around the country. Godspeed, my friend. I will now read my orders. Bupers order number 851471. When relieved, you are approved to transfer to the retired list at the Greater Rear Admiral. There you will report directly to sink home Admiral Amy Kozad, who has a higher order of award than you do. And, and for the group, I'm very thankful that I actually read my entire orders for the first time because in the fine print it says, as a retired flag officer, you will not be required to do laundry, dishes, or other things like that. Sir, I'm ready to be relieved. Uh, 
I will now read my orders. Chief of Naval Operations Orders number 1989 when directed by reporting senior detached from Commander Patrol and Reconnaissance Group and report to Commander Naval Education Training Command as his relief. Very well. Sir, I'm reporting for duty as Commander Naval Education and Training Command. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Pete Garvin, Commander, Naval Education and Training Command. Well, good afternoon. I cannot imagine a better venue to host a change of command ceremony or to honor the simply fantastic service of Amy and Kyle Kozad. Um, the cradle of naval aviation, where it all began for Admiral Kozad and me. Simply amazing. This museum that has all the storied history of the warriors that went before us. Sturls, thanks for sharing this special place with us. To all the family, friends, and shipmates watching, thank you for taking the time. I wish we could all be together for this auspicious occasion, but circumstances are what they are. And I know our paths will continue to cross in the future. Love you, Kaylin Lauren. Kyle, Amy, our paths have crossed so many times, I can't even remember where it began with any degree of certainty. But a particularly vivid memory is from way back in VP-30, around 1999, if memory serves, where I was a baby pre-department lieutenant commander, and there, there was this living legend, post-department head lieutenant commander Kyle Kozad, running the WTU, which is the weapons and tactics unit. They were introducing the P-3C aircraft improvement program, but more importantly, they were refocusing our community on what is important which is war fighting. I looked up to you then, as I do now. You are an amazing officer, leader, and gentleman. And the best thing about you isn't even those attributes. It is, of course, Amy. You are both an inspiration to us all, and my significantly better half, Cheryl, and I wish you nothing but the very best going forward. And we are both humbled and proud to consider you our friends. Now, in keeping with tradition for incoming commanders, I will keep my remarks brief. I'll add my sincere thanks to the entire team that had a hand not only in making this virtual ceremony a success, but to the broader team across the nation who are bringing in sailors and delivering the finest education and training to the people who we really work for, our sailors in the fleet. I'd also like to thank our senior leadership, specifically Vice Admiral Now and Admiral Burke before him, as well as our four-star commanders, Admirals Grady, Fogo, and Aquilino, as well as our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Gilday. I thank you not only for the opportunity to continue to serve, but most importantly, I thank you for your continued advocacy as we transform the Naval Education and Force Development Enterprise. Your removal of our barriers to success and facilitating the change necessary to provide the best trained and educated sailors to the fleet. From the training support centers, learning centers, and sites across the globe to ready relevant learning, the magnitude and direction of change we envision simply would not be possible without the support of Navy leadership at the very top. So thank you. To the NETSI Force Development Enterprise, from street to fleet, know this. We must remain focused on what matters most at the end of the day, and that is sailors that are ready to fight and win against any adversary at any time, at any location. Whatever the conditions, whoever the adversary, our Navy and our nation rightfully demands that we prepare our shipmates to do just that. My covenant to you is to be your weapon system in the fight to get to what is right in recruiting, educating, and training our force. My final charge to the enterprise is the following. Live the Navy's core values. Lean in, don't just talk about innovation, be about it. Always have a bias for action. Barriers are meant to be removed, and even some of the tallest windmills will come down with enough persistence tenacity, and the support of your chain of command. And when it is your time in the batter's box, make the most of the opportunity. Don't stand there waiting for the perfect pitch. 
Don't swing at every pitch, but step up and swing. Team, I could not be happier with the vector we're on, so let's get after it. Chief of Staff, carry out the plan of the day. Aye, aye sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have completed the change of command and we will break Rear Admiral Garvin's flag at the NETSI headquarters. Please join me in a five second pause for breaking of the flag. The next phase of the ceremony is Rear Admiral Kozad's retirement. His guest speaker is Admiral Bill Moran, retired and the former Vice Chief of Naval Operations. His remarks have been pre-recorded and they will appear on the mega screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Moran. Okay, um, I'm not sure, not sure how this works. Nobody here to help. Boy, I miss my staff. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am delighted to be here this afternoon, even if it's virtually and not in person, uh, to pay tribute to a wonderful, wonderful family, leader, and spouse. And uh, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. KC, thanks for the invitation uh, to participate and say a few words. Uh, but I really want to use this opportunity to kind of call this our final flight together uh, for you on active duty. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that later. But I wanted to tell you that this retirement gig ain't bad. Uh, it's uh, really not a retirement when you leave the military. It's more of a transition. Think of it as another move, because I know you're going to have to move if you haven't already. And uh, I guess I ought to give you fair warning already if you don't already know that you better put your wallet in auto ripple because it's uh it's payback time to amy so good luck the other part about being retired is that it's uh it's really a great time uh, to pick the time and place of your choosing to go out and have a little bit of cool cool breeze blowing through your hair grabbing a cold beer and the only worry you got is most of the time is when's the tide going to reach your chair so there's a lot to look forward to, and you richly deserve this opportunity to kick back and relax a little bit before you start the next gig. Now, in this business of personnel, there's a lot of people that are dialed in uh, from the personnel world, the N1 world. You got CNP down there, uh, or dialed in today, who gave remarks. It was terrific. Uh, but, you know, part of the job in personnel is to try to do your best to retain the best and the brightest. In fact, if you want to be a good leader, you got to work on building your team and keeping good people. And there's nobody that I've met that is better that it, to draw in young women and men from across many different pay grades and make them feel like they're part of their family, make them feel like they're part of the team. Uh, call it the COZAD retention machine, if you will, uh, from their tours in Whid Whidbey to all the way to the White House, to Norfolk, to Pensacola, and everywhere in between where, where they've been part of command. It's going to be really, really hard uh, to see Amy Kozad leave our presence on active duty. Now, I'm hoping you're getting a little bit of a laugh out of that, but I can't tell with this ridiculous iPhone. Uh, but I do, I do hope that all of you appreciate the seriousness of what I'm trying to say here, and that is that Amy has done so much for our Navy in making people feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves, uh, a family beyond just the Navy family, their own family. Uh, she has a wonderful way about making people feel special. And she has done that in every tour and every command Kyle's been associated with. She has literally helped keep in hundreds, if not thousands of young men and women from all walks of life, decide to stay in an occupation, a profession that is rewarding and fun at the same time. 
So Amy, from the bottom of our hearts, Patricia and I pass along our congratulations. We pass along our respect and admiration for the way you've handled things throughout Kyle's career, but especially the last year of very challenging times. Uh, you've done it with courage, you've done it with strength and wisdom, and you've done it with compassion. So we, uh, we all love you, Amy. And I really just I want to jump through this phone and give you a great big hug. Congratulations. Now on to the main attraction here. Uh, talking about the other half of this dynamic duo. Uh, how, do you, how do you sum up 35 years of an incredible career uh, without coming across trite in a few short moments? So I decided to use a quote that's been widely used here in the last several months because of the times we are in. And it's an important quote by Maya Angelou, uh, and many of you are familiar with it, but let me just repeat the essence of that message. It goes something like this. People will forget what you say. People will forget what you do. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And to me, that's what most people are saying about Kyle Kozad and Amy Kozad. They'll never forget how these two made them feel. And it's why they have such a legacy of leaders throughout the Navy. Whether they're commanding officers, major commanders, chief petty officers, master chief petty officers, the list goes on and on. There are so many people that attach themselves to Kyle Kozad's example as a leader that it's really hard to fathom. And to me, that is the ultimate sign of the impact somebody's had in their career. Kyle also understood pretty early on in the business of flying, that when you assume the mantle of leadership, whether it's as a plane commander, a mission commander, or a flag officer, when you assume that mantle, uh, you suddenly realize that the vocation of military service transitions into a calling to serve others. And he has done that in ways that every leader, I wish every leader could grab a hold of and embrace and, and apply those, that standard to the way they lead. But that's an important additional characteristic and attribute of Kyle Kozad's 35 years of service. Now he also understood as Rudyard Kipling, another poet, uh, once said about the wolf. And in part it says, the strength of the wolf is the pack, and the strength of the pack is the wolf. And it probably could be said a lot of different ways, but let's all agree, all of you who know Kyle Kozad and have seen him operate in many different parts of his career, that he really enjoyed being the wolf. But he also completely understood that the strength of that wolf relies so much on the pack. And that's why he invested so much time and energy in developing the pack so that the whole team could be stronger and better. And I think that's an incredibly valuable lesson for any of us to learn. So when you add that to this wonderful mix of upbeatness, always positive, never letting bad news get in the way of getting to the bright side of a solution. And this other piece of his strong, strong conviction about family, whether it's your own family or the family unit that surrounds or is part of any organization. You've got the makings of an incredibly fabulous leader. Uh, and we've seen that time and time again in the way Kyle has led in a way he has handled tough situations and come through it on the backside with a stronger organization than he found. Now, Pete and Cheryl, you are stepping in to some pretty big shoes. And you know that. You've had to do that time and again with Kyle Kozad. He is 
bigger than life in many ways, but you two are extraordinary leaders in your own right. And I want to congratulate both of you for taking the baton from Kyle and running with this really, really important organization. It's an organization that must succeed and they're undergoing huge change that Kyle has helped propel. And I know you'll do the same. Congratulations to both of you. Now, let me wrap it up with, well, let's just close our eyes. Uh, and if they're not already closed, and let's talk about a final flight. It's a late night flight. It's going to be a 12 hour burner out looking for an adversary submarine somewhere over the North Atlantic. Kyle's in the left seat. I'd like to believe I'll be in the right seat. We can argue who, who's the greatest P3 pilot of all time. But tonight, I'm just going to say Kyle's it and you got the left seat, buddy. And even Mike. Mike probably is in the back uh, as the taco on this flight. We'll get to enjoy a little camaraderie with all three of us. But off we go, max power set, lumbering down the runway like the P3 does, climbing even in a slower, what seems like forever pace to get the cruise altitude and a long, long journey out to on station. Get out there, start dropping buoys and more buoys, firing more CADs, burning more paper on the AQA-7 and that smell of things burning or permeating the, the tube. And then breaking the silence hours into it. Breaking that silence is those wonderful words of Taco Jez. I think I've found something. And then the Dawn Riders come to life and they snap to, they localize the target, they develop attack criteria and they get the constructive kill just in time before off station. Power goes up. Kyle and I take a look at each other as we smile, breaking lock from that 200 foot altitude and going up through a small, slight overcast layer and into a pink sunrise. Nothing more magnificent than the moment you break through that cloud, that cloud layer. And nothing more satisfying than a mission complete. Kyle, I hope that as this day wraps up, that sense of satisfaction, that wonderful feeling of being able to call your career a success because of the people you've touched. That's what I hope you feel today, because you should. You and Amy both should. So on behalf of all the men and women that have served with you, served alongside you, served for you, we offer our deepest respect and, and blessings for many, many great things to come as a retired member of the community. We'll be here for you. Our arms are open and we're looking forward to seeing you in person. God bless you. God bless your wonderful family. And thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you've done and for your service. beauty of doing this live is I just got a text from Admiral Moran and he just wanted to express that he sends a hug to, to you all uh, virtually albeit but uh, congratulations as well thank you Admiral Moran thank you for participating with us virtually although virtually we felt your presence we think you jumped through the screen Rear Admiral Kozak, on behalf of the wardroom, I will now unveil the sea chefs presented to you from the Netsi wardroom and staff. The national ensign in the sea chest was flown over the Naval Education and Training Command headquarters.
on behalf of the former Force Master Chief, Master Chief Cole, also known as the Force, Force Harris will present to Rear Admiral Kozad a gift from the Naval Education and Training Command Domain Chief Petty Officers. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Kyle Kozak. So for the folks out there on Facebook, nine of the 10 people in the audience stood up. My grandson did not, for the record. Admiral Moran, uh, as a retired four-star, I will make the assumption that you paid for high-speed internet and you can hear me right now because I do want to say a personal thanks. Your willingness and uh, ability to be part of this ceremony means the world to Amy and I. Now, uh, for the group, I do have one quick story about Admiral Moran. He and I always used to have a healthy personal competition and he kind of alluded to that in his remarks about who the best P3 pilot of all times really was. And depending on who you talk to, him or me, it was always a pretty close race. Now there are a few things that go without saying about any pilot. We always want to fly. We always want the landing. And we never want to be a co-pilot. That's just who we are. Well, a month ago, Admiral Moran confided to me, he said, quote, Casey, I'd gladly be your co-pilot and read checklists or approach plates for you any day. I've got to admit, that's pretty touching sentiment, but without hesitating, I turned around and told him, actually, boss, these days, I'd much rather have your help with the rudder pedals. Think about that for a minute. Admiral, I guess as I uh, join you on the retired list today, that leaves young Garvin with the bragging rights. Congratulations, Pete. Now, back to my 35 years, one month, 17 days, and one hour, 37 minutes in uniform, I owe everything to an incredible support network starts with a moral compass and an ethical compass set squarely on True North that my parents set and provided for each of their four kids as we all grew up. It extends to an extended family who often had to ask, why does the Navy make you do that? Many of those folks who asked that question were the same folks who supported each one of our 20 plus household good moves and countless deployments like it was old hat to them. And then there's my three kids, amazing and resilient in every respect part of each one of those moves and deployments, each of whom epitomize amazing young adults who have grown into dads from dad's military service and flourished within a lifetime of love and support provided by an amazing mother. Amy and I couldn't be more proud of them and what they've accomplished in our growing family to include Matt and a certain five-year-old who's in a flight suit today, future astronaut scientist Blue Angels sitting in the front row. I'm surprised at this point he's still with us and he hasn't found his way to the museum playground yet. And then there's the most important element behind a marginally successful aviator like me. You guessed it, it's our two yellow Labradors, Cooper and Charlie. I, I'll pay for that tonight, I know, but uh, for those of you not in the audience today, I saw Amy starting to tear up and I had to call an audible. But actually you were all very correct in your assumptions, that irreplaceable element is Amy. Navy life is tough enough for any spouse who grinds things out through the flag ranks. But as everyone knows, Amy's one of a kind. To tell you the truth, after my accident, it was like raising a kid all over for her again. She was there when I learned how to walk again, and she inspired me to climb steps for the first time. And just between us, since I had slept in our aide's office in a hospital bed for the first few months at home, she kept talking to everyone about her master bedroom. Her master bedroom. And that was my real motivation to learn how to climb steps because after all, I was paying the rent at quarters A. It was our master bedroom. Then she let me learn how to drive again under some very specific conditions. I was like a 16 year old with his first learner's permit. She imposed rules. No girls in the front seat, no cell phones, no music. Well, guess what, sweetie? To celebrate tonight, I'm gonna take my five year old sidekick with me and we're going cruising down Palafox and breaking all your rules. We love you. 
Now, any career in a broader sense, any life, is really defined by the choices one makes. In 1981, I chose to attend the United States Naval Academy to pursue a dream of becoming a Navy pilot. Years later, we made a tough decision not to change careers and go to Delta Airlines like all my other buddies were doing. Along the way, I've done multiple career-ending tours and assignments, but Amy and I have pursued our passion for our Navy and for naval aviation. We often look back and smile that things seem to have worked out for us. You see, Amy and I made the hard decision to stay Navy because we both love being part of a mission that made a difference for our family and for others. And we love being part of an organization where capable leaders could positively impact the life of the folks who worked alongside them. As much as the lure of the airlines called us, the passion to lead and serve our Navy and naval aviation was much greater than any promises the airlines could offer. Well, those decisions resulted in opportunity, one after another to be exact. From flying around the world multiple times to serving in the White House and having an office in the West Wing, to commanding at five different levels, getting the opportunity to serve amongst incredible servicemen, women, contractors, and government employees. And do you know what? We never intended to serve a day beyond our initial commitment after winging. Most recently, I, I was given what I assumed to be my final incredible opportunity in the Navy to serve as a commander of Naval Education and Training Command here in Pensacola. Largest shore command in the United States Navy, actually 14% uh, of the Navy's total length strength. But that wasn't the appeal for me. It was the incredible mission at NETSI with an opportunity to make a difference in the development and the lives of our Navy's newest sailors and officers. But as I found out soon after taking over, leading NETSI wasn't the only opportunity that I'd be afforded during this tour. Shortly after my injury, folks wrongly assumed that I'd look for a medical retirement as soon as I got out of the hospital, but that was far from what I wanted. On the contrary, I asked, how long can I extend in the job when I get back to continue the great work that my NITSI team was doing? With that request and support from some pretty senior folks in our Navy, two of whom spoke today, I was given the opportunity to continue to serve as our Navy's only disabled flag officer. And so today, my Navy's circle of life comes to a conclusion. Like every other Naval aviator before me, I started my career right here in Pensacola. Today, I'm right back in Pensacola, the cradle of naval aviation, to close out my logbook. A circle of life, and when I think about it, I think it's not unlike a beer can. Yeah, I said a beer can. So you see, there aren't too many naval aviators who don't enjoy an occasional cold beer. But much of, most of us never give much thought to what happens to that aluminum can after we finish the cold beverage. Here's the rest of the story. Empty cans accumulate in the Oak Club. Soon thereafter, when the dumpster fills up, those cans get hauled off to be recycled. And back in the day, that meant being melted down, recycled aluminum, ended up, among other things, as aircraft parts and skin used to build airplanes. Now it's starting to make sense, right? Those old beer cans were melted down, and that aluminum was used to build old airplanes like the P-3 Orion. Now that the P-3 is all but retired, with newer aircraft relying on modern composite fiber construction, there is little, if any, need for aircraft aluminum. So, what happens to those old warbirds war that go to die in the desert? Well, I like to think that the old airplanes are disassembled piece by piece, and once they're disassembled, they get recycled. Again, that aluminum goes right back into the circle of life. And yep, you guessed it, new beer cans. What an appropriate circle of life, from beer can to aircraft, and finally, back to new beer cans. A circle of life not unlike my own. Pensacola is where my passion for naval aviation and my career as a naval aviator began. Pensacola is where we were blessed to return during our final tour, where we could remain part of Big Navy, and also gave me an opportunity to fit in at the, as the oldest ensign standing in the cradle of aviation Friday nights at happy hour. And today, Pensacola and this great museum is where my Navy career comes to a fitting end. But for those folks in the audience and those folks out on Facebook, we would ask that you not shed any tears for Amy and I today because this isn't a full stop landing for us or our passion for naval aviation. Actually, it's more of a touch and go. We made an incredibly easy decision to purchase a house in Pensacola, call this our, our home, and to accept a position later this fall as the CEO of the Naval Aviation Museum Foundation. I guess that circle of life continues in Pensacola here for us. I consider myself one lucky can of beer. I wanted to share one final thing with all of you today, something that gave me inspiration 
when I was in the ICU following my injury, and frankly, every day after that. The inspiration comes from an excerpt from the SEAL ethos. It goes something like this. If I'm knocked down, I get back up every time. I'll draw on every ounce of my strength. I am never out of the fight. Amy and I have learned during this tour on multiple occasions that we only have one chance. Regardless of circumstance, never feel sorry for yourself and let what matters most pass you by. Care, believe, have a purpose, and live your life to the fullest. Regardless of your circumstance, stay in the fight. So one final note, when I get home tonight, after I go cruising on Palafox, any guesses on what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna raise a toast, one poured from a single beer can, recycled and repurposed in that circle of life. I'm gonna raise my glass to those who continue to carry the torch as Amy and I go ashore. God bless you all, and God bless America. Thanks. The watch, the watch will be read by none other than Lieutenant Dan Kozak. The watch, for 35 years, this sailor has stood the watch. While some of us lay about our bunks at night, this sailor stood the watch. While some of us were in school, fulfilling our own commitment to service, this sailor stood the watch. In those years, when the storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizons of history, this sailor stood the watch. Many times he'd look down from the skies above, seeing his family standing there in need of his guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times, but he knew he must stay because he had the watch. He stood the watch for 35 years, standing tall on his own two feet or proudly from a wheelchair. He stood the watch so that we, our family, our fellow countrymen could sleep soundly in safety each and every night knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today, we are here to say the watch stands relieved, relieved by those you have trained, guided, and led. Dad, you, sir, stand relieved. We have the watch. Will the guests remain standing for the benediction? Military guests, cover. Chaplain Miller will now deliver a pre-recorded benediction. Can I draw your attention to the mega screen? Serving with you, sir. Uh, Admiral Kozad and and ministering with with you and with your wife Amy uh, those years ago in Guantanamo Bay was a real blessing and so I thank you again from the bottom of my heart and my my family's hearts uh, for your service to our country and it's it's an honor and a privilege uh, to get to participate in this ceremony today and now let us pray Heavenly Father in the beginning you created everything However, in 1985, you began a new work in making a young officer named Kyle Kozad. After 35 years of faithful service, you've rounded out your creation with now Rear Admiral Kozad. We thank you for the life, skill, and dedication he has brought to this, our great United States Navy. We also thank you for the great sacrifice of his wife Amy and their children in allowing him to serve faithfully and with honor. Today, as Admiral Kozad retires, his service does not go unnoticed, but is remembered for all he gave to the lives of those he served with, the lives saved by his service, and the determination to see his calling through. We thank you for sustaining the Kozad family, and we now ask that you continue to guide them in all they do from this day forward, and especially from what it sounds like the good Admiral needs your guidance because he has literally no idea what he's going to do uh, starting tomorrow. Now, Lord, 
May you bless Kyle and Amy, Ashley, Leanne, Dan, and young Jackson and keep them. Make your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them and turn your face toward them and give them peace now and forevermore. In your holy name we pray, amen. God bless you, sir, and um, enjoy your retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed changing of the watch. Rear Admiral and Mrs. Garvin, welcome to the Netsy family. Rear Admiral Kozad and Amy, you have been relieved of the watch. We wish you fair winds and calm seas in your next chapter. You're always family. To the Naval Aviation Museum and team, thank you providing us this world-class service to execute this ceremony. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you all for being with us. Have a great Navy day.